Welcome to my kitchen. Today we're going to make Paximavia. It's a delicious, crunchy, toasty Greek cookie made perfect for dunking in coffee, tea, hot chocolate, even milk. It's similar to the Italian biscotti, but it's Greek and it's absolutely delicious. It takes just a few simple ingredients, but it's going to be a taste treat that's really worthwhile. As I said before, Paximavia is made up of just a few simple ingredients. Flour, sugar, butter, eggs. For flavoring, you can either use orange extract and orange rind or lemon extract and lemon rind. Of course, it has to have vanilla. And then finally, two leavening agents baking soda and baking powder. Put this all together and you've got a wonderful taste treat. The first thing we're going to need to do is get our wet ingredients together. You're going to need two cubes of butter. Now you can use good quality margarine if using butter kind of bothers you, but butter's great and it adds a wonderful flavor. If you're using butter, you need to bring it to kind of room temperature because we're going to cream the butter. So you put two cubes of butter into your bowl. To the butter, you want to add one cup granulated sugar. Now at this point, this is where you're going to begin the creaming. And when people refer to creaming, what they mean is just mixing the butter and sugar together until it forms a, a creamy substance similar to frosting. I'm just using a regular hand electric mixer. If you have a larger uh, heavy duty mixer, that works fine too. You can see this mixture is quite thick with the room temperature butter and the sugar. If it's not perfectly mixed, that's okay. The next step is to continue the creaming by adding the eggs. And you will need three large eggs. There's no need to separate the eggs into a different bowl unless you have a tendency to shatter eggs and get uh, eggshells everywhere. So we continue beating the eggs into the butter-sugar mixture. And of course, start slowly. And from time to time, wipe down the sides so that all the mixture is getting incorporated, the eggs, butter, and sugar. This is looking pretty good, and now it's time to add the flavorings. Depending on the mood you're in, you can use either orange flavoring or lemon flavoring. I'm particular to orange, so I like to use orange rind and orange extract, but some people prefer lemon, and that's just fine. The thing to remember about Paximavia is with the addition of the rind, whether it's the orange rind or lemon rind, and the extract, whether it's the lemon extract or orange extract, you're just going to get a hint of the citrus flavoring. It will not be overpowering. You will not end up with a lemon flavored cookie or an orange flavored cookie, but you will have that little hint of citrus that makes this such a special dunking cookie. Okay, so for, choose your extract, whether you want lemon or orange, and as I said, I prefer orange, and you put in one teaspoon of your preferred extract. And 
and then no matter what citrus flavor you use, you're going to need one full tablespoon of vanilla extract. And be sure it's vanilla extract, not vanilla flavoring. And give this a run through with the beater one more time just to incorporate the two extracts. Okay, that's it. All of our wet ingredients are ready to go. Now it's time to turn our attention to the dry ingredients. We have all the dry ingredients assembled. Flour, the rind, and the leavening agents of baking powder and baking soda. So we're ready to start putting it all together. First thing we'll do is use five and a half cups of all-purpose flour. So just measure out the flour and put it into a bowl. And remember, you're, you're uh, putting your dry ingredients into a separate bowl. The wet ingredients are waiting right behind me. One. Two. Yes, and I have a really fancy canister here. An old Folgers coffee three pound canister. I've, kept, I've been using this for years. And since I keep it hidden away, I figure why not. Three, three cups. Four. and a half. If you make Paxamavia often, you may discover that you might need a little bit more flour or a little less depending on the humidity of the day, uh, the moisture content of your flour. This is one of those recipes that was handed down to me from my mother, from my grandmother. And my grandmother uh, really didn't use recipes. She knew how to make things just by the feel. She could feel when the dough was ready. And sometimes she would um, confound my mother uh, with the a pinch of this, a pinch of that, a spoonful of this, a little putiti, meaning a little glass full of something. And my mom would get confused. Well. What on earth is a putiti? Is it a big one? Is it a little one? Uh, the old Greek women, they knew just what to do just by the feel. But I'm not that talented, so I use measurements, but even I have come to uh, trust my fingertips when it comes to certain doughs. So here we go. You've got your five and a half cups of flour, and now you need to uh, go along with the extract that you used in the moist ingredients. If you use lemon extract, then you want to use lemon rind. And you can use the rind of a fresh lemon, and that would make it taste even doubly delicious. However, I very rarely have fresh lemons or fresh oranges on hand all the time. So when I'm in the mood for Paxamavia, I like to have some dried uh, orange peel or lemon peel in the cupboard so I can mix it up quickly. So you can use the dried variety or you can use the fresh variety. I'm going with the dried because it's easy. And I'm going to use a tablespoon of dried orange peel because as I said before, I really am partial to orange flavoring. But if you like lemon, that's fine too. So there's the dried orange peel. The only thing that's left now is to add the leavening agents. You're going to need three teaspoons of baking powder. And it's important for you to check the date on the baking powder to make sure it's still viable, it's still workable. Otherwise, your cookies and your cakes won't rise. 
So three teaspoons of baking powder and just a half teaspoon of baking soda. Okay, all the dry ingredients are ready. So now it's just a matter of blending them, mixing them up. And that is important because you want the leavening agents in particular to be distributed evenly in the flour. And the same thing goes for the lemon or orange peel. So blend this well and then we're, we'll be ready to combine the wet ingredients and the dry ingredients. Okay, that looks just about fine. Now we're left with combining. Here's the egg, sugar, mixture from before with the butter and here are the dry ingredients. So it's just a matter of pouring the wet ingredients into the bowl with the dry ingredients. And it's time to start mixing. This is going to be a dense dough will not be particularly light or fluffy. So just start mixing and again if you have an electric uh, mixer, a big heavy duty one, you might want to use that. But doing it by hand is just fine too. It's also a very short dough, meaning that it's got a lot of butter in it for the proportion of flour and other ingredients. Okay, I want you to look at this. This dough is quite dry, almost crumbly like pie crust. This is where you put your fingers in. That's one of the things I love about making po poximadia. It's fun. Now, it should stick together eventually as you need it. If it seems just too, too dry and it's not sticking together well, and I'm thinking that this might just be a little too dry, maybe I should have used five cups of flour instead of five and a half, uh, then you can add little droplets of milk. Not a half a cup, not a quarter of a cup, just little droplets, little sprinkles. Just enough to moisten it up a little bit and then go back to playing with your hands. I think this is going to do it. I like to get my hands in what it, for me, one of the joys of making bread is kneading it by hand. I've had a bread machine and it's nice, but there's nothing like just getting in there, getting your fingers all goopy, kneading things, and making something delicious. Okay, I think this is coming together just fine. I'm going to keep kneading it. There's no need now to add any more moisture. Now be sure to rub the dough from your hands so that you can incorporate it back in there. And of course everybody washed their hands before they started, right? Okay, this is coming together nicely. And all I'm doing is just incorporating all the butter and eggs with the flour. There's really nothing magical. Okay, I want you to look at this finished dough. It is, as you can see, it is very, very dense. 
That is not light or fluffy at all. This is really dense stuff. And this is about the texture you want for the dough. It's just perfect, and we're ready for the next step. You can see I've taken the dough and formed it into a rather imperfect, huge, humongous log. That's just so that I get a sense of how much dough I'm working with. Now what you want to do is just take this dough and divide it into almost equal portions. So I'm just going to cut it in half. And it doesn't have to be perfect. If one uh, roll is bigger than the other, it doesn't matter. Now set aside one half of the dough, and we're going to work on forming the actual Paximavia. You'll need a cookie sheet. You don't need to grease it because, believe me, there's plenty of butter in this dough. You don't need additional grease. So kind of form your dough into another imperfect semi-log. And your goal here is to spread this thing out so it about fits the, uh, fits the cookie sheet lengthwise this way. So flatten it out. This takes time. Just kind of push it down on each end flattening it out, and yes, this dough is, it's pliable, but as I've said before, it's very, very dense. So you're going to have to work. You're going to have to really massage this baby. What you're looking for is you're looking for a roll that is close to the length of the cookie sheet and about four inches wide here. So just keep flattening it out, and this is part of the fun, getting in there and using your hands to make something delicious. And take a look at it. Sometimes you need to use the heel of your palm to get the dough moving. And part of the beauty of this whole dessert, this whole cookie, is that it's going to look homemade. It's going to look handmade. It's not some dough that's been extruded out of some machine. This is from you, from your heart. Okay, I think I'm pretty good right here. Now what I'm going to do is just kind of flatten these edges right here. So it makes more of a rectangular shape than an oval shape. And I'm evening it up as best as I can right here. And then I'm just going to flatten this in a little bit, flatten this in a bit. And voila, there it is. It doesn't look very impressive right now, but once it's baked, once it's toasted, it'll be really delicious. The final step before putting the Paximavia in the oven is to cut the slices. So you need a knife. Doesn't have to be super sharp at this point. Kind of eyeball it. You want to make cuts about one inch wide. Now, I'm not cutting all the way through. That is not necessary. In essence, what you're doing is scoring. So please don't cut all the way through and separate these slices. That's not necessary at this time. And you can try your best to make them uniform slices. If they don't come out perfectly uniform, that's okay. That's one of the things that's nice about something that's homemade. It isn't perfect. It just tastes good. Okay, there you have it. The 
pock de madia are ready for the first baking. They've been shaped, they've been cut, and now it's time to place them in the oven. We're going to place the formed and cut Paxamadia dough into a 350 degree oven. Bake it for just about 20 minutes, possibly 25. Now the thing to remember is this is a first baking and all that needs to be accomplished is that the dough will rise a little bit, it'll cook, but it's not going to be toasty. It'll be very, very light, almost an undercooked uh, product when you take it out of the oven this first time. So in it goes for about 20 minutes. It's been about 25 minutes. I checked the Paxamadia at 20 and they were still a little too light. Now I'm going to take them out. As you can see, they're very light. They're not toasty brown at all, just very, very light. And that's what we wanted. They're not supposed to be completely toasty brown. Now that they've come out of the oven for the first baking, it's time to cut through where I scored before. So I'm going to be cutting all the way through now. If I had baked the Paxamadi all the way through completely, then I wouldn't be able to cut. They'd be way too dry and way too crispy. But this is pretty easy. I'm just cutting all the way through where I had scored originally. And you do this while the dough is hot from the oven. Now it's just a matter of turning the cookies on their side. After years of cooking, I've developed asbestos fingertips, so I can take these cookies and turn them over without any problem, but some people might want to use a little spatula. Just turn them over on their side, and you will place these back in the oven, 350 degree oven, for approximately 7 minutes per side. So I'm going to bake them for 7 minutes. Take them out, turn them over, and bake them again. So in they go for about seven minutes. I checked the Paxamadia at seven minutes, and I left them in about three minutes longer because I wanted them a little more toasty. Now I'm going to take them out and just turn them over on the other side. See how nice and golden brown that has gotten? Again, if you don't have asbestos fingertips, you can use a spatula to turn them over. Take them out of the oven if you like. Alright, these are going to go back in for another 7 to 10 minutes. Paxamadia have baked on the other side for about seven minutes and I looked at them and they're ready to come out. I want you to see what the finished product looks like. The Paxamadia are nice and toasty brown on both sides, including the top and the bottom. They can cool in the pan. There's no need to remove them because actually the toastier they get, the better they get. So just leave them alone, let them cool in the pan. While this batch is cooling, you can bake the other batch. The cooled Paxamadia should be stored in, in an airtight container of some sort, either plastic container or a metal tin. The biggest problem you're going to have with the Paxamadia is that they disappear far too quickly and you'll be making them again and again. They're absolutely delicious. Delicious, crunchy, tasty cookies, perfect for dunking in coffee and tea. And I'm going to have a cup of coffee right now. I 
I've been waiting for this. Mmm. I love them. Hint of orange and really toasty. Perfect. Absolutely perfect. So I hope you give it a try. It's wonderful. Paximavia. Greek toast cookies. Okay, guys. Time for a coffee break. Here you go.